Hey everyone, and welcome to another video on this channel. In a previous video, I looked at Bicep and how to deploy Bicep templates with Azure DevOps. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the authoring experience with Visual Studio Code. There are no further slides involved. We're just gonna dive in and start showing you how the authoring of Bicep templates works. Let's get started and I made the screen somewhat bigger so you can uh, hopefully see clearly what is going on. Now, suppose I want to create a resource group and within that resource group, I want to create a network with subnets and then maybe a bastion host. How do I do that? That's still a relatively simple uh, template, but this is just to show the authoring experience, right? So let's get a go uh, get started and create, first of all, our main.bicep uh, file. Now, you heard me say I want to create a resource group. Yeah, that actually means that we also have to set the target scope. But the target scope by default is a resource group. In this case, target scope equals, and I can do control space, that will be a subscription. Now, I want my resource group to be created, but I want the resource group name to be also a parameter. So I'm going to define a parameter, RG name. That's going to be a string. And I'm going to set the default value, just an example, Igeba RG. Then to create the actual resource group, you have seen it in previous video, that was the resource keyword and then a symbolic name. And then the authoring experience uh, makes it easy for you to select the, uh, the type of resource you want to create. In my case, I can just start typing resource group and there you'll see the different uh, API versions that resource group supports. I'm gonna take the latest one, just press enter and then set the properties of this. Now you see these squiggly lines here, by the way, I used STG, uh, that's for storage account. Uh, I'm gonna use RG. Um, as you can see here, there are some squiggly lines because the resource declaration is missing a name and location. So I'm going to set the name of the resource. That's the name in Azure that the resource will, uh, will get. Uh, that's gonna be the name of the parameter. So that's very easy. We just uh, have the parameter there. The location, I'm going to hard code now. So I'm going to just set uh, West Europe as a uh, location. Now, what else can you do? Well, suppose I don't know, then I can just do control space. And there I can see, ah, yes, I can set some tags on this resource group. So I'm gonna set tags, colon, and then you see this, this expects uh, an object, curly braces, so just press enter, and then I can specify the tags. For example, I want a tag called environment, and I want to set this to def, right? This should be enough, actually. This, this is already a working, a functioning uh, Bicep template that at the subscription level deploys a resource group. Now we're ready to create the network. Now we're not going to use a resource, we're gonna use a module. So we have to create the module first. So let's add a folder called modules and then create a module called uh, vnet.bicep there. Now to create the actual uh, network, uh, we are going to use indeed resource uh, over here. I'm gonna call it symbolic name VNet, and I'm gonna search for virtual uh, networks. Um, yes, there we have it, that's the latest API version, then equals, and then of course the curly uh, braces. Now, what do you uh, put inside this, uh, this module? Um, well, of course, let's first look at the squiggly lines. Yeah, name is something that I really need. So let's pass in the name of the VNet. Now, I want this module to have a parameter as well for this VNet name. So VNet name is going to be a parameter and that's going to be a, a string. So the name will be the VNet name. How easy it is to work with parameters and then use the, those parameters inside a bicep file. What I also need is a location. So the location, and I'm going to use a resource group function for that and the resource group function I can use location the property location to retrieve the location of the resource group I'm creating this vnet in and you'll see later because my target scope is subscription you'll see later how I can set the scope for the vnet to the resource group but that's something that you will see uh, in a moment now I'm a little bit lost I don't really know what to do now okay yeah control space to the rescue of course and yeah there's something like properties for our network when I'm using a colon here, I can see, yeah, I need I need the, the curly braces, so just enter. And then again, I'm, I don't know what to do, just control space again. So you'll see me do that uh, several times, control space, to find out more or less 
what I need to uh, do. Of course, you have to have some experience with these resources in Azure to know what you need and, and what you really don't need. That, of course, uh, takes some, some time and some experience to get that uh, to get that right. In this case, we're going to keep it simple. I need, I need an address space for my VNet. This address space is also just an object. And then that one has, I don't know, control space, address prefixes. And address prefixes is, ah, that's an array. That's an array of, uh, of strings. Now, I don't want to set the address prefixes to an array. I just want to uh, pass in uh, one address prefix. So, okay, that's limiting it a bit, but uh, that, that's fine. So I'm going to create a parameter here called vnet address uh, prefix. That will be a string. And I'm going to just use that vnet address prefix over here. Now, this does nothing for my, for my subnets. So, um, okay, how do we do the subnets? Well, let's see. Under address space, what else can I add? Control space. Ah, yes, there we have also the subnets property. That's indeed also an array that he expects. And this uh, array is something that you have to set uh, as follows. You have to uh, um, create objects uh, in here. And then you're going to specify, for example, the, the name of the subnet, etc. Um, now, I want to make that a little bit uh, different um, because you have to type the name, but for example, like this. Uh, oh, that's wrong. Wait, that was uh, a bit too simple. Yeah. Um, and then you have to type again, you have to type properties. And then within properties, you have to use uh, the um, address prefix again. So this is how you uh, supply the subnets. Now, what I want to do is I want to make it a bit simpler and I want to pass in my VNet subnets with a simpler array that just contains items that have name and address prefix. So I'm just declaring an array parameter here, right? And I'm not going to use uh, this, uh, this thing over here that I don't want to use. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete this and I want to um, iterate over the items in my array. Now, within bicep, you can do that with a for loop. So I'm using a for here. And then I can yeah, take a variable. I'm going to just call it item for item in vnet uh, subnets, right? And then I can pass in my object. Now, this object, of course, has to be formatted like a subnet should be formatted. So it's going to have the name of the subnet, but that will be the name of the item uh, that uh, that I find in my for loop. And then, of course, the subnet has properties. And that has an address prefix. And that's going to be item address prefix. And you'll see later, of course, how I pass in this vnet subnets array from main bicep to vnet uh, bicep. Let's see if all the uh, curly braces and so on are fine. Let's uh, do it like this. Yeah, I think we have them all here. Yeah, that's uh, that's indeed correct. So this defines uh, or this creates a resource of type VNet, a virtual network with an address space and then subnets within that address space. But I pass in the subnets with my own array that just contains a name and an address prefix. So that simplifies the, the parameter passing uh, a little bit. Let's just save this and see now how we create this VNet from within main.bicep. Now we have the VNet module created. We have to see how to use that module. So that requires the module keyword, also a symbolic name. I'm going to use VNet. And then the auditing experience is clever enough to give me the modules folder and then the module, one of the modules within that uh, folder. So all the rest is the same. We start adding properties to the module. Control space can help me here. Yes, I need a name as well. Yeah, I'm going to set this to uh, VNet uh, Geba here. Um, I also need a scope. And that's important because the scope for my main.bicep is a subscription level scope. But the VNet needs to be created in the resource group that I created. So I can set the scope of the module to the resource group I created. And that is, of course, RG. That's a symbolic name of the resource group that was created before. And of course, it's a module. So we need to add the parameters to the module. 
So when we type enter here and then we do control space, we can clearly see the, the parameters that the module expects. I'm first going to set the VNet name and I'm going to use the same name as above there. So I'm going to use uh, VNet uh, Geba here. I also need a VNet address prefix. Let's make it simple here and just do 10 dot uh, um, 30.0.0 slash uh, 16 doesn't really matter and then of course it requires the subnets so subnets in this case is an array an array with items in it that have a name and an address prefix uh, property so I need to provide these items over here and then I'm just doing the following thing I'm specifying uh, the uh, name uh, here so the name is, uh, for example, uh, I want to have a uh, server's subnet. Doesn't really matter, just an example. And then the address prefix. Now uh, there is not really suggestions here, so that that, that is not that is not part. Of it. So you have to know what you use in your uh, in your array. The address prefix for this subnet is uh, going to be. Uh, let's make it simple again. Ten dot thirty dot. Um, let's see. Yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, like this slash 24. Now I am also going to create a, a bastion host. Bastion host requires a subnet with a specific name. The name of that subnet should be Azure Bastion subnet. So I'm going to call this Azure Bastion subnet. And the address prefix is going to be indeed the uh, 10.0. Uh, 30.2.0 slash 24 again just an uh, just an example so with this we actually call our module our vnet module now what we're going to do here is we're already going to try and deploy this because uh, there might be uh, an, an issue here that uh, that we're not working uh, properly so let's just go to the uh, terminal um, I already am authenticated to my subscription using the Azure CLI so we are going to uh, going to do a deployment of the main uh, bicep file uh, here. We can use the uh, Azure the as deployment sub create command for this. So at the subscription level, we are going to submit this uh, this template uh, template file. Um, I don't have any specific parameter that I need to set here because indeed I have a default value for my resource group. I could override that of course by using the uh, uh, parameters uh, option there. Oops. This one I'm going to clear out and then uh, do that again. So I'm not setting, I'm not overriding the parameter uh, RG name. Let's run this and uh, see what uh, happens. All right, now that didn't work and that's okay. I'm just leaving it in because I made a typo here. <laughs> I set it to address proxy, whatever that is. So that's of course not correct. And that's something that the error clearly uh, reflects that that is something uh, that just won't uh, won't work. So let's go to address prefix here. Let's save this and then uh, deploy this one again. And this deployment worked properly. So here you can see the output of the uh, actual uh, command that I just uh, just ran. So let's check out in the uh, Azure portal if we really uh, did provision all of this. And here we are in the Azure portal. We are at the resource group Heba RG. There we see our VNet that was uh, deployed. And of course, yeah, the resource group was also deployed by our BICEP uh, template. If you look inside the uh, VNet, we see that uh, two subnets were created, servers and then the Azure Bastion subnet. And now it's time to deploy the uh, Bastion host. Now, similarly to the uh, VNet, uh, we are going to use a module to deploy the Bastion host. Now, I already created this module for you. Uh, that we don't have to go through all the steps of typing all that uh, text here. The authoring experience is uh, the same. Now, in this case, of course, in our Bastion module, we expect two parameters, the Bastion name and then also the VNet name in which we want to create the Bastion host. Now, a Bastion host also requires a public IP. So within the same module, we create that IP as well. So the resource of type public IP addresses. We give that IP a name. Uh, we concatenate IP dash with the bastion name. We pass in as a parameter. And then the rest is all the same. A location, uh, an IP requires certain properties. 
and also recommended today is that the skew is of the uh, standard uh, type so that's creates uh, that creates a ip address a public ip address for us to create the actual bastion host we create a resource of type uh, bastion host here and again same thing it requires a name which we use a parameter for the resource group location is set and then these are the specific properties for a bastion host so a bastion host takes ip configurations each ip configuration has a name and an ip configuration has properties in this case we need to specify the subnet that our bastion host uh, will use Remember, we created this Azure Bastion subnet subnet during the creation of our VNet. Now, important here is that in the properties of the subnet, the resource ID is required for that subnet. And I actually don't have that. Uh, so I construct it here by using the resource ID function. Resource ID function takes a parameter for a specific resource type, in this case subnets, and then we want a subnet in the VNet with VNet name that we passed as a parameter, and the subnet that we know is going to be called Azure Bastion subnet because that's required. So this returns a string, which is the resource ID of the uh, subnet. Now our bastion host also requires this public IP address. Yeah, that's just the resource ID of the IP we just created. That's of course easy to get to because we have the bastion IP symbolic name here and we can just retrieve the ID using bastion IP dot ID. And then we set the private IP allocation method to dynamic. I think that's the default. I don't really have to set that here. This is just making it a bit more explicit. Now, what do we do uh, or how do we now create the actual uh, bastion? Well, that's of course very easy. Let's just, just do that once more, one more time, drilling it in, so to speak. So I'm gonna use the bastion uh, module, going to modules and then bastion bicep, and then we're going to uh, provide it with the properties. The name of the bastion host, you know what? I'm gonna just use this. Yeah, that's gonna be it. The scope is the same as before. That's gonna be the resource group and then the parameters to my module. And that's easy. We know that there is with control space a bastion name. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, bast heba here as, uh, as well. Uh, there are other ways to do this cleaner, but I'm, I'm just doing it this way. And then the VNet name. Well, actually, the VNet name, um, I want to just illustrate that we can use something which is called uh, outputs uh, as well. So the VNet was created in our VNet module. Now, um, when you create something, you can have an output uh, for it. So in this case, I can say VNet and then outputs. And then the output, in this case, I've chosen to output a name property. So VNet outputs name. As you can see, yeah, it's giving us some uh, squiggly uh, lines there because it doesn't exist. Well, let's first indeed just save this and have an, an output uh, in, our, in our VNet here. So if we go to our uh, VNet.bicep, at the end, we can specify outputs we want, to, we want to give. And this is just an illustration. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, the output, let's make it simple, is going to be the name, that's gonna be a string. And what is going to be the output? Well, in this case, it's really simplified, just the VNet name uh, that we uh, use here. But it does illustrate the concept of outputs. So if my VNet module is outputting a property string, I can refer to the output of my VNet creation by using VNet and then outputs. Yeah, of course, I get help there. And then I can use a dot and he knows now that there's a, a name output. And remember, we use the VNet name in the parameters for the bastion host because the VNet name is required to retrieve the uh, ID of the, uh, of the subnet. Now again, for you advanced users out there, there are other ways uh, to achieve this. This is a relatively simple way uh, to do what we uh, needed, uh, needed to do. So this is it. Um, I'm going to, again, deploy this and uh, see uh, if my bastion host gets deployed. My subnet and so on already exists. And as we are using the incremental method, this should normally add the bastion host to my existing uh, deployment. So uh, let's try and do as deployment sub create again and run this and see what happens. 
It takes a while before the Bastion host is created, but after a while in the resource group we see indeed that the Bastion host was created. When I click on the Bastion host, I can see that this is in indeed in the VNet Geba network and then the Azure, Azure Bastion subnet. And this concludes our look at the authoring experience of bicep templates in Visual Studio Code. I hope you like this. If you have questions, of course, do leave them in the comments. And I see you some other time. Bye bye.